For Louisiana vs. All Y'all, Jared Roser here today with the brand new head coach of the Neville Tigers football team, uh, Coach Jeff Tannehill. Uh, obviously, no stranger to the the stature of that program, a uh, Neville guy himself, and has, has spent time there in two different stints as an assistant coach. And and now you you take the reins as Coach McCarty moves up to principal. Coach, it's good to see you, man. Congrats again. How's everything been going? And it's great. It's great to see you, Jared. Uh, we've been friends a long time and worked uh, down in central Louisiana together. And uh, it's good to hear from you again. And, uh, you know, as far as this job so far, you know, it's been a whirlwind of, of, of about 24, 48 hours. Uh, but it, uh, you know, it, it's a great job. And, and uh, I've had a great, a great boss for the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, he's moving up and, it, and it's just a, a blessing for him to for me to you know to be sitting here in this seat for you I mean we've we've known that that Mickey was in play for the principal position for a while when did the the conversation start to to pop up of of who was going to succeed him as football coach and and how did that conversation occur bet between you guys or whoever else may have been involved in that combo well you know, when the principal job came open, I don't know for sure. Uh, you know, he was, you know, he did, I don't think he knew what he wanted to do. Uh, he spent a couple of weeks, you know, praying about it, talked to his wife about it. And uh, he's real big, and I am too, on, on letting the kids know the first thing. And uh, so the day he decided to put his name in the hat, he told the kids the next morning. Uh, and he talked to me and, and, and the rest of the staff. Uh, that day also and so you know it all kind of happened about two weeks ago when he decided to do that and uh you know uh there's not a better person for that job over there uh than mickey mccarty and uh you know i'm just glad that uh you know i was chosen to have this job and uh take over the reins and, and carry the torch is i guess the the football coach position how how quickly did that that piece of that conversation come together that you would be the the guy that that took over was that something that you kind of had a feeling it it was something you had discussed I guess that if if things did go well and and Mickey got the principal job that that you were the guy that made sense to to take the reins of the football program or did he kind of drop that on you yesterday and that conversation played out I guess over the weekend or yesterday morning or whenever that happened yeah, well, uh, the week the week before, um, you know, we he sat down with two or three of us on staff and and uh, said if this thing goes this way, this is the direction we're going to go in. Uh, but until it happens, we're not going to get the cart before the horse. And uh, Sunday on the he, he was coming back from Gulf Shores. Uh, Doctor Dream made the decision Sunday, uh, the fifth. Uh, let Coach McCarty know he was on his way back. Uh, he called me to let me know that it was happening, going to happen fast, uh, because he wanted all this to be a smooth transition. And, uh, you know, he was going to be announced as principal, and then he was going to announce me the same day. So, you know, really just started sinking in uh, Sunday night, and then Monday morning, you know, it all started. And, you know, that's just – just try to be as smooth as transition as possible because we got enough going on in this in this world right now to you know for change and we wanted to be as smooth as possible with the transition but that's when it hit that's when it hit home with Sunday night yeah so. I, I saw I saw the the video of the interview you had uh, with KNOE where there was kind of an emotional moment you kind of reflecting on the significance of this and I wanted to ask you about that just as some of those conversations took place and as you really kind of wrapped your mind around the significance uh, for you of, of what this opportunity means, how, how did, how did that play out just as, as things started to, to really sink in and, and hit you and, and what were some of those waves of emotions like? You know, it, it was real hard. It still is. Uh, I had a good friend of mine uh, played ball with him. Uh, he was kind of a big brother to me growing up and, you know, he was a senior when I was a freshman, and 
he played quarterback here and he lives down in Baton Rouge and he sent me a message that said said Bill Rupel, Charlie Brown, Joe Coach, Mickey McCarty, and Jeff Tannehill. It just kind of came over me like, wow, I'm being mentioned in the same category as them. Of course, I have not proven myself like they have by any means, but you know, just to just to be mentioned in the same position as they were it is an honor you know here at Neville being from Neville so you know it just hit home and it any kind anytime I talk about my you know my high school days uh and people that meant a lot to me you know it, those coaches here at Neville back then you know it really did hit home what do you think young still in school Jeff Tannehill if if you got a chance to to tell him, hey, hey, kid, one day you're going to be the head coach of this program, uh, what do you think that would have sounded like to to younger you to to realize that 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 was going to be in the cards for you uh, as an adult? You know, the the knucklehead that sat in those stands like those boys did this morning. I don't know if he had ever dreamed that would come true, but you know, we all grow up and mature, and and we find our path, and you know, and I knew it. You know, at, at a young age, I knew I wanted to coach. And so that's what I've done for the last 23 years. And, and I can, want to continue doing it as long as I can do it. In the, in the feature on Mickey that, that Adam Hunsucker wrote for the News Star, he kind of he, – he looked back to when Mickey took the reins and him kind of coming to terms with the significance and, and how to take it. And he talked about, you know, win, win that day. and and all of those pieces as you take over one of the most historically successful programs in Louisiana high school football, what are some of your kind of initial thoughts on, on what that, that job looks like for you, what you, what your mindset is, I guess, taking into it on a day by day basis. Well, you know, it's hit the ground running. I mean, it's uh you know, jump in with both feet. I don't have time to test the water. Um, you know, being around here for the last couple of years, I significance of what's going on and, and where our improvements need to be already. And uh, that slogan that Mick, Coach McCarty, uh, you know, coined years ago and win today, to me, it, it is as true as it can be. Uh, if you don't win today, how can you worry about tomorrow? And uh, so we have to win today every day. And uh, – the rest of it will take care of itself. And, and we're going to continue using that slogan. Slogan. I'm not going to try to fix something that's not broke. I mean, Coach McCarty has been one of the most successful coaches here at Neville High School in the history of the school. And definitely not going to try to fix it. I'm just going to continue to steer the and row the boat and, uh, and try to do the very best I can and work as hard as I can possibly work. When you mentioned some areas that you see to – to potentially focus on or address is, is a lot of that looking at where last year's team in particular fell short and trying to transition to this year, or are there some other aspects that you're talking about there that you kind of have in mind that, that you'd like to, to be working on? Is, is it very football specific type wise, or is it bigger picture program type wise? It's all the above, Jared, really. It, you know, we want to make sure we get our kids in the right place, you know, to be successful in the right position. Uh, we want our coaches to be in the right position, make sure they're all coaching what they're supposed to be coaching, you know. Uh, and it, all, it always, you know, I have a meeting tonight with our auction committee, so we want to try to improve that part of it too. So it's a uh, – and at this time, you know, auction is going to be tough to have. So, you know, all of those things combined, you know, this job is is uh, a bigger job than anybody really thinks. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do the very best I can do and uh, try to improve the places we can improve. Because to me, if you're not getting better every day, you, you're getting worse. So that, that's something I've always lived by. And you mentioned you you feel like you still have a lot to, to prove to be in that 
that list that you mentioned of, of the great Neville coaches, uh, you have had two previous stops as, as a head coach and been successful at, at those stops. You were named the, the 1A coach of the year each time and, and what you were able to do. Um, and in those opportunities, what would you say, if you look back to your first head coaching role and, and then what you learned from that, that you took into coming to St. Fred's and now both of them combined coming to Neville, what are some of the, the biggest things that you've learned about what that, that role of, of head coach looks like? Maybe, uh, maybe that as a, a position coach or a coordinator, you don't necessarily catch that you feel like you're that much more prepared to handle uh, this big, this big opportunity and big challenge now? Well, you know, honestly, you know, I respect 1A coaches, I mean, to the utmost. Uh, those guys work hard. I mean, they have small staffs. They, they learn every position on the field. They learn how to mow the field, wash the clothes. You know, when you're, when you're a head coach at a 1A school, it is, I mean, you're doing everything. And, and that's part of what taught me how to be a head coach. The other part of it is, is that every time, every job I ever took, I took with the Neville tradition, the Neville way, and I took it with me to those jobs. Uh, I've always thought that, you know, when you have as much success as, as they have when I was here um, playing, and then I combined with uh, the way to how to deal with people that, that Coach McCarty has, how to deal with staffs, how to run a big organization, you know, try to deal with all of those and use and combine all of that, you know, at the places that I've been. And, and hopefully all of that will transfer and we'll have success here at Neville, you know, with all the experience that I gathered at those 1A schools and, and the experience under Coach McCarty with the big program. Those are the things that I'm going to use the most to help be successful here. You had mentioned that obviously – we're in such crazy times and so much uncertainty and so many aspects of, of every, I mean, everything really in the world around us. And part of that we, we see is there's some uncertainty with, with everything happening with the coronavirus of how this fall ultimately looks. But as you guys prepare for hopefully as close to normal of a, a fall as, as possible from a football standpoint, what are some of the things that, that you look at in terms of, how this team can come together and focuses for this particular team. Uh, your first as head coach at Neville. Um, it's your first year as head coach, but you've been back over there the last couple of years. So certainly very familiar with, with the team and what you guys return. What's kind of the, the outlook uh, if we can get through this coronavirus piece and actually get to some Friday nights under the lights. Yeah. It, you know, right now it's, it's pretty different right now, you know, checking out all the kids in and, and make sure they got temperatures, hadn't been around anything. Um, but the message that we've been sending since we started this summer is, is that we're going to prepare like we're starting August 1, which we probably aren't, but we're going to prepare for that. And we will be ready for anything that turns, changes from there. But at this point right now, we have got to have ourselves ready physically, mentally, and emotionally to, to play football when it's time to play football. If that changes, then we'll change our direction, and we're prepared to do that. And, and that's the message that Coach McCarty sent to the kids. When, when that, you know, when, you, when there's change, there's a wave. You know, there's waves of changes. You always want to be riding on top of the wave. You don't want to be on the bottom getting crushed by the water. So, the, the ability to change and, and adapt to change is, is going to be the utmost in this part. I'm sorry, in this time, you know, with the change of head coach and COVID and all that stuff, you know. So our kids are are they're tough. They're mentally tough, and, and I look for them to just ride the top of that wave all the way. Yeah, I, I was going to ask how the how the student athletes are doing with all of it, but it seems like. The kids, as long as you've got a plan and and are on the same page, that they seem to be rolling with this about as as well as they can under the circumstances. They are, you know, they work incredibly hard. Coach Herndon is our strength coach, and 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 he keeps that steady. He rides them pretty good and stays on them, and and they love him for that. And uh, and we're blessed to have Coach Herndon, but he is he is part of our foundation here 
you know, the last 10 or so years as a strength coach, and he does an unbelievable job, and, and, and that part of it hadn't even checked up yet. So I'm proud of him, and I'm proud of the guys for continuing to work hard uh, these last couple of days. And uh, I look forward to the time we can really start sitting down and meeting and, and talking a little football with them, because right now we're just working outside, weights outside, running. and uh, But I look forward to the time we can sit down and have team meetings and and talk some football and, and talk some life. Yes, sir. Well, send my love to, to Coach Herndon and, and Coach McCarty and everybody up there. It's certainly good to catch up, and congratulations to, to you guys on the, the big news to start this week. I appreciate you chatting with me a little bit about it. All right, Jared. Thank you. Good to catch up with you. You too, man, always. Again, he's Coach Jeff Han uh, Tannehill, the new head coach for the Neville Tigers up in Monroe, the Louisiana versus all y'all, Jared Roser.